So this is what happened, guys. This is the motor guide. When I received it at my job, I opened up the box. The box looked a little bit up, but anyway, everything inside looked fine. I opened it up, I looked at it. Uh, I decided to put on the plug that I have bought. Everything looked fine. And then I went on the boat to try it. As soon as I looked at it, I see something that was wrong. I see the shaft a little bit bent. I see a little scratch over there. So I got concerned, but there was nothing to do at the moment. And I just pressed the button to start it. And this is what I realized right off the bat. All right, guys. Remember last time I tried to fix everything and it didn't work right off the box? Well, the thing is, when I expected the old one, there was some damage down by the, this key or whatever you call it. So it must have been dropped either at the facility, on the factory, on the way to my address, I don't know where, but the matter of fact is the, uh, it was a problem with it. So once we, uh, and I had two choices. Either I had to go buy a box and send it back to where I got it from, which the guys could have said, you know what, this is not a factory problem, it was dropped. And of course they couldn't have fixed it. I had a lot of nice things about Motor Guide. Uh, they could have fixed it, or I don't know what would have happened. But the way I decided to go is to open up myself, to see inside what's going on and see around the way what the problem was. And now you can see here what the problem was. Once I pulled this out, I saw inside one of the four magnets. There's a magnet here, one, two, three, four. These four sections of magnets. One of the magnets, it was smashed, it was demolished. So this what it was causing the problem to make the noise. So. I cleared everything out, but unfortunately, they do not sell only the piece. They do not sell the what's it call it? Just the, the the magnet to replace. What they sell is is this particular piece right here. This piece without this and this. Just this piece with the magnets inside. The cheapest way to go. It's a hundred dollars. I'll show you the the link in the description below. So. I thought to myself, since I already took everything apart and everything looked fine, except the scratch that I had here, I thought to myself that if I just get the metal part, I'm going to have to unscrew the pipe either way, I will have to run the wires, and I would just use the old components, the old shaft, whatever you call it, I would have used all this, the old this, it would have worked fine, because everything else it was good, the brushes and everything. But then I said, you know what, let me just get the whole assembly, the whole piece, for three hundred dollars, well, it was two hundred forty plus shipping, three hundred dollars with some seals. You could get it for cheaper, you could get it for less, for more. But then the, it would be free shipping, but it would be higher the price. Nevertheless, it's three hundred dollars to get the whole unit complete. So I said, you know what? Let me get the whole unit complete, put it on the new, the pipe that I had, and keep the old one for sports, because eventually, sooner or later, we're going to have to change the brushes. Maybe there's a water damage, maybe this burns. I mean, down the line, this will need to be serviced. And the only thing I will probably need to do anything to it is this. So, these parts now I have. So, what did I accomplish here? I accomplished to open it on myself, to, know, to be confident in the future to open it and service it, if I need to, okay? And over here, since you open here, then you can easier open this as soon as you open the top and you disconnect the wires and you put everything back together and you know how it goes you know you feel more confident to dig in and do some more stuff by yourself okay so what i want to tell you guys is not difficult to play with it you just look some videos on youtube you just get it started you remove the bolts here you remove this cap off you slide through the back this one i didn't know that now i know this comes from from the back 
then this tilts over. If you disconnect the wires from the top, this piece will come right out. Or there is two screws in the back here, which you can take off the brushes and then remove the, this piece and leave the, the brushes with the wires hanging there. No matter what, once you open this, you can do a lot of things to it. Now there is some seals behind here, some seals behind here, some seals behind the shaft. Everything you can see it once you open it up, once you expose it. There is a rubber seal here, a rubber seal there. It's not that big, but it does provide some seal. So eventually, within a year or two, you have to open this and see if you have any water inside, because water can get inside there from the top. The top is not 100% secure. I could have put some silicone, I could have made it 100%. You know where the top meets the bottom but this is supposed to be designed that way so you can take a little air inside there for when it was running hot so it's not really a good idea to isolate it hundred percent up there it's a good idea not to spray water with a hose on top of it and not to leave it in the rain if it's a raining day out there I'll put a plastic bag over it just so I protect the water from going in because the water will eventually go down the tube and go inside here so you don't want that just do what you gotta do to provide the water from going in from the top and the bottom and you'll be fine but do not be afraid to put your hands on do not be afraid to open things but you gotta find on YouTube you, you ask us you drop a uh, comment to the link below and you say guys I need this and the guy here that's in charge with this, with this uh, this forum here, he'll be able to direct you and give you some links from some other people. I didn't make no video of how to open and of how to disconnect it because I was upset as it was. And now due to the coronavirus, I didn't have no friend with me holding the camera and videotaping. I did it myself. So I can just give you a briefing that you can find everything online. Uh, my friend and I can, uh, can provide you with some links. We don't have to all make videos for how to put it apart. There is videos out there, so it's very easy. So the other thing I want to tell you is when, when I put this glue here, right? So this is the remaining from the glue I used last night. This is stuff as a rock, uh, more than cement. Cement, it will probably chip. This is not chipping. This is like a, a rock, better than a rock, okay? So this is what's inside here. And this is what it was inside here in the first place when I tried to take this out by myself. Don't forget, I have removed everything else, so inside it was a hollow piece. So I put a piece of tubing and I was able to, you know, put a lot of force to it to remove it. And I was hitting it with a gun. Uh, fortunately, I didn't hit it long enough and I didn't know that the threads are not an aluminum pipe. This is not aluminum, this is carbon fiber and the, the, the fragile. So if you try to take this out without a lot of heating here, most likely you promise you, 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 you will damage the pipe here. Okay? That's what I did. I ruined the pipe. I will show you pictures how I did it. It was, I didn't know. I thought that once I take it out, the aluminum uh, threads will be exposed. No, that wasn't the case. I think aluminum is for the fresh water, the black pipes. This is not aluminum. This is, like I said, carbon fiber, which is good for the corrosion, but it's a pain in the neck to get it out. So anyway, make a long story short, when I try to take it out, regardless, I messed this up. Okay? So what did I have to do? I had to go back on the website and order me a new piece of pipe. Another $42 plus 1618 for shipping, $63 on top of it. But you know what? Here it is. It came. Last night I put it together. I put the glue on it after I mixed the two components together. I washed it first. I cleaned it with some solving. Uh, I put the, res the, the residue on, whatever you call it. I screw it back in. And now look, it started as a rock. I'm not going to drop it in the water because inside it might not be sealed yet. And I don't have time for a seed trial. But everything seems to work fine and make a long story short I was able to do it within two days of course the time that I had to wait for everything to come but the job it was like two hours to put the pipe not even two it just take my time put the wires inside go upstairs put the wires back together guys I'm telling you this is nothing hard about it and the way I did it is I, like I said now I know how to do this I have per spare parts, it cost me $360, okay, but I'm ready to go. And I'm not going to need to wait for months or for weeks for shipping, for back and forth, 
from the factory because whether it's their fault or not it takes time okay and this time I cannot blame them he's not I don't think it was their fault it could have been UPS it could have been anybody so anyway thing is it works fine and as you can see here on the pictures when I first put this on it was drawing 77 watts at full speed at the 20th setting I'll show you now what I mean and uh, this this thing here it looked a little bit off to the left and this wasn't really like 100% horizontally nevertheless the sound it was okay you, you heard it before right so but I wanted to make this perfect I wanted to see you know if I could get a better or get a worse so what I did I put a little mark in here as you see now it's off because I tilted to bring it more center over here I put a little marking so I can mark this piece as well because don't forget this piece it has to be horizontal with this if you call it, if you put this more to the side and this even even if this is level if this is not level it's not going to sound right and the only way to know this is when you put it in now I don't know how it was from the factory but I know this was right here and since I bring this to the left a little bit I decided to put this little bit to the left and you know what it sounds better I mean the sound I really can't tell the difference it's so 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 slightly different that you can't even tell but when I looked at my readings of the kilometer I have inside you can see it right here the very first try at full speed it was 77 watts and after leveling it up and playing with it and bringing it you know to what I think and it would looks better than level the water draw it was less it was 70 and by the time I put it together and I tied this bolts back again not too much you're not using a hand cranking tool try to see how much force I've used to take it out this is how much force I put it tucking it in you don't want to go crazy but you don't want to leave it loose you know you'll feel it so anyway when by the time I was done with that when I played it again to see if it got worse actually got better now, right now at full speed as you can see <coughs> let me start let me go all the way down okay this is all the way down that's one that's two three four five fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty I think that's it yes okay So now let's go inside and see what the meter is reading. The meter actually right now, you see, I have 61 hours left, <laughs> but doesn't matter. Anyway, so that was 20, right? Lower it down, 19, 62 watts. 18, 59 watts, 17, 56, 16, 52, 15, 48 watts, 14 if I remember correctly, yes, 13, 12, 11, Two, one. That barely moves right now. Down to zero, which is let's even press that to kill it completely. Ironing is two watts. It's burning two watts just for sitting there with the signal and everything on. Okay. So this is my uh, uh, the, the fuse and this is where I'm taking power from to the kilometer there so if I kill it it's like I'm plugging the switch right so now even this it's off okay look at this on top there so when I go back and I press this Will this go on without losing its memory? 
probably it will. Yes, 97.7 like before. Now I put the propeller on and let's see how it sounds after we make sure that nothing is hitting anything with the propeller on and let's see how how much power does it draw. So now this is step one, two, three, four, five, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. No more than that. Okay? Let's go in really quick. 71 watts, six watts more than earlier. Alright? So let's drop it really quick. I don't know if it's harming or anything. So anyway, this is need to be in the water in order to find out more stuff. So we're gonna have more actually in the water sea trials. Any questions? I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer to you. Sounds good, no sound, no vibration, no nothing. The propeller obviously doesn't have a snug fit. It's not dead center. Even the stupid uh, zing in the center, it has a big hole. And if you, if you, if you want to eliminate a little bit of vibration, you got to put the, the washer and the zinc dead center. Just approximately with your hand before you tie it down. It's not like really tight, so once you put it on, it stays dead center. So, but I don't think it makes a difference. That's why I guess they didn't make it tight. So anyway, right now it's still running. Right now, we stop it, and it's time to close the power. Boom! That's it. Closing the power, meaning also this is not working. Although the jaw is very little, but still, why have it on? When I turn it on, all the info will be back. Uh, it definitely has a little battery inside that is keeping control of that. So, anyway, more info to come later. Shut off this. Shut this off. Shut this off, everything seems to work fine. Guys, more questions? We'll make more videos. So, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Alright guys, I have a heading lock, though it's there. We're going 2.1 miles per hour. We must have the current behind us, most likely. Because it's only burning 449, 440 watts, which is... 10 point, 8, 11 point, whatever. Between 10 and uh, 11 amps an hour. You now this pace we have 8 hours left. Batteries are 39.11. It says 96%. We have remaining 95.5 amp hours. So we'll be playing around here for like an hour or two. Anyway, so now the heading lag is taking us to what I said, to uh, whatever degrees is that, 156 meters. So, I could be trolling right now, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I could be trolling my little silicone. Hell yeah. I just want to make sure it doesn't go down tangled. So we hit the bottom. And then we just hold it right there. And this could be enough movement. Especially for little stripes. So nice and quiet. We're going fast enough. 2.2 miles an hour. Burning less than 10 amps. I love the fact that I can see it any time the remaining of my batteries how many amps how many volts I have left how many amp hours I have used the fact that I can see here my degrees which option I have on the manual the heading lock the anchor whatever so many things guys that I have to get used to them 
But like I said at the beginning, everything is possible. Everything is doable, my boys. Nothing is impossible. With little knowledge, searching and asking around, we could do a lot of things. So, there's a lot of people here to help us. The way they help me, I can help you, you can help somebody else, and so on and so forth. And the fact that I can see here what's going on, it's even better. Because sometimes you forget what, uh, what you have said. The Lawrence, on the other hand, doesn't have all this information here. Let me see. No. Let's put cruise. Well, every time you do you mess with that, I guess it's changing the speed. I could go up again. Anyway, see, the Lawrence doesn't say how many miles you go or if you have the manual or if you have the heading. It doesn't say all that. Let me go high. What the hell is that? Oh, I guess. Yeah, this is turning the thing. Okay. So, yeah, you see, I'm getting used to it. This one only has few things, modes and stuff. It doesn't say how fast you go. It doesn't say stuff like that. Good girl, so smart. Untangle yourself. Yes. You're so smart. You're so damn smart. You good girl. Hell yeah. You're smart, aren't you? No, the wind is picking up. What the? Ah, it could be a fish. It's definitely, it was definitely the bottom. It was definitely the bottom. It was definitely the stupid bottom. So now the wind is pushing us this way and now he knows better how to hold us. If there's no wind, he cannot determine which direction to push to keep you in the spot. Guys, there was definitely something. That could have been a bite. I don't see no freaking sign of of weed or anything unless it was the freaking sand I don't know ah. I really don't freaking know take this out I feel like I'm in the Florida Keys fishing in the Everglades <laughs> guys this is awesome this is freaking awesome if I get a strike now, it will be more awesome. If I don't, who cares? But look, I know there's wind. You hear the wind and whining. I mean, I don't know if you can hear me talking. There's definitely wind. And it's definitely the baby right here. Figure out how to push the, how to let her go, how to, how to be in order to keep the face into the wind. And so quiet and effortlessly. Look, it's barely moving to keep us right here. Guys, whoever came out with this idea is the freaking man. Okay, let's go. We have things to do, guys. In uh, future videos, we're going to see different conditions, more, more current, less current, wind, this, that, yada, yada. So today, it was just a taste. I have a lot to show you. Now, who the hell is calling us? 